uh, Eli Elishmeri, who's going to give a Dvar Torah. Kerry John, and those who have a uh, birthday today, to Sadabis My friends from Azerbaijan understand this. We greet people who have a birthday with, may you live to be 120 years old. And of course, the parasha of this week is somewhat related to this. We may find out why it is that we say 120 years. Moses lived to be 120 years, and he may have not made it if it weren't for his father-in-law, Yitro. Just, just stay with me for a minute and I'll explain to you. <laughs> Yitro comes to visit his son-in-law and um, for a very short visit, and he notices that from early in the morning till late at night, he's sitting and judging among the people and from morning till night. And so he said, the next thing to him, the next day he said to him, you know, you are doing this all wrong. You're gonna wear yourself out and you're gonna wear out the people. You can't do it by yourself. You gotta delegate authority. So this is chapter 18 of Exodus, verse 18. Hi, hi, twice. And so I think because of the fact that Moses followed the advice of his father-in-law, he probably lived to be 120 years so that we can greet people with 120 years. Moses is one of a long line of people and leaders who benefited from an act of kindness of others. All of us sitting here are the beneficiaries of a selfless act of many who have appeared so briefly in our history, but influenced us greatly. We may not even know who they are or the events, but you can be sure there have been many. Minimally, we're all products of a person who decided that it was time to move to this country because where they lived was no longer a good place to live, to raise a family, and look for the future. They themselves may have experienced a difficult life at first here, but their selfless act has enriched our lives. <clears throat> we, in turn, must pay it forward and be always thoughtful of imbuing future generations with our acts of kindness. It is good for the world. The act of kindness reverberates throughout the world to offset evil. It is good for us. It humanizes us. Acts of kindness enrich our souls as they touch others. We are asked to plant trees. Of course, with the two bishvat, it's quite the right thing to do, even when we're old, because we're leaving something for future generations. So please, resolve that in the coming month, you will do a random, unexpected kind, act of kindness for someone and increase the joy in the world. When you do, I'm sure you will continue in the months ahead to do the same. Erev Tov Toda. Ellie, that was, that was absolutely beautiful. Um, I'd like to now ask uh, Rabbi Sherman and our two distinguished council generals to come up for, uh, for the dialogue. Good evening. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to uh, welcome first time guests to Sinai Temple, as well as uh, many of you who are regulars here in our congregation and community. As the uh, Honorable Nassim Yaakayev was telling me as I walked up and to watch the faces of our guests from Azerbaijan as uh, Cantor Feldman sang the national anthem. Cantor Feldman has been walking around the halls this week uh, singing that. <laughs> I thought it was a Yiddish nigun from, uh, but really amazing and it was actually a wonderful cultural experience to accompany Cantor Feldman in welcoming our guests. So, uh, very, very uh, thank you for uh, being here. Of course, to the uh, Honorable Consul General David Siegel, who is truly a wonderful friend, not just to Los Angeles, but also to our Santa Temple community. Pleasure to be here. So we're going to begin with a simple question, and the question is, how did this relationship begin? It's not something that is uh, often talked about in mainstream media, in synagogue worlds, in the larger world. So first, the question, was it political? Was it a friendly relationship between two people, two groups, how did it begin? First of all, I would like to express uh, our deep gratitude to Sinai Temple 
uh, to Rabbi David Wolke, to Carol Lerman, to all the others, the hardworking people, um, for, for this wonderful event. And for all, to all of you who came to see us, who came to listen to us, to talk to us, uh, it's an amazing opportunity. And actually, it's my um, uh, second time at Sinai Temple. The first time when I, w w w when I was here it was when I attended the wonderful uh, National Day reception, Israel Austin, uh, that's when I got to know. And, and this is another wonderful occasion I'm joining. So um, thank you, thank you to all. And uh, I would like to... But I was about to ask for another round of applause for our great <laughs> cantor and the pianist for singing so well. Great feeling here, believe me. So, uh, in response to your question, um, you know, the relation between Azerbaijan and Israel uh, is a special one. It's a special one to Azerbaijan, and uh, I'm sure it's a special one for Israel. And it's not just, you know, about a kind of political ties, you know, bilateral visits, uh, you know, all the stuff you see in between different countries, etc. But it's a lot about human beings because this relationship has a very strong human and a foundation and that's our wonderful Jewish community the leaders of which you see here today with us the uh, Mr. Yevda Abramov, Bili Yevdaev and uh, Rabbi Kubo I mean uh, this community that has been there for centuries for 2500 years um, has has been there and lived there peacefully, in dignity and harmony with their Muslim brothers for all this time. And, <laughs> and when we established, actually restored or re-established our uh, independence in 1991, Israel was a natural ally for Azerbaijan because there was already strong the foundation for that in our society. So that's why um, the Israel was one of the first countries to recognize Azerbaijan's independence and one of the first countries actually to open an embassy in Baku. Oh. So, and of course, over these two decades, more than two decades, the relationship has expanded tremendously, uh, but that human element remains and strongly remains and is strongly contributing to the fostering and strengthening of this relationship. Yes, let me, let me first uh, start by saying, if you want to get anything done, do it through the Sinai uh, community. <laughs> I think, I think you, should be, you should be very proud uh, of your partnership or your participation in this partnership, which is uh, uh, Council General said is so very significant, not just to Israel, but for the Jewish people. This is a model of how human beings can get along and religions can get along in the Middle East. Jews and Muslims can work together and we're seeing it take place right before our eyes. Now most of us, like Abba Ibn uh, uh, used to say, most of us like uh, our clouds without a silver lining or we like the bad news, the, the good news is something that we pay less attention to. This is something that is worth paying attention to. Um, this is a 2,000 year old relationship, 2,500 year old relationship, uh, where Jews lived and prospered peacefully in, in this region of the world. And as you've heard, I, I don't have that much to add, when the uh, uh, Soviet Union came to an end and you had the emergence, the re-emergence, of uh, uh, independent nations. Azerbaijan was a natural uh, ally for the state of Israel. And as you said, we were one of the first to establish diplomatic relations, to set up an embassy. Uh, and we're very, very proud of this relationship. We've gone from a trade relationship of a few million dollars to billions upon billions of dollars. You'll hear about that later on. Very, very significant. Uh, and we're very proud of it. Based on the trade, to the nitty-gritty details, what is traded and why? Are, why? I've read a lot about the oil that um, 
more on Oriel Nazarbajan, obviously, is in the state of Israel. Um, so what is traded and what's a daily basis? What does that look like? Well, a lot of things are being traded. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's an it's it's equal partnership where we trade uh, what each country uh, is an expert in. Uh, uh, right now, Israel is uh, uh, discovering new natural gas resources in the Mediterranean. I'm sure you've all heard about how significant that is. Uh, Israel doesn't have that much experience in the energy field, uh, and we need partners uh, in the region and in the world to help us develop these incredibly significant resources that uh, Moses, you mentioned before, uh, didn't know that we had, and uh, here we have it uh, after all these uh, centuries. And Azerbaijan is a partner with Israel, including the, uh, the, the, the gas company that you saw in the video, in helping Israel develop its gas fields. So that's one element of the partnership. Another element of the partnership is that uh, Azerbaijan being a huge exporter of, of oil, uh, and Israel is, is receiving a very large percentage uh, of our domestic oil use from Azerbaijan. Uh, the relationship extends from there into the fields of water, agriculture, medicine, high-tech, cybersecurity, the ways that we protect our high-tech and our IT systems, uh, and on and on and on. It's a very robust relationship that is over four billion dollars in domestic in, in bilateral trade right now as we speak. So we both export and import very intensively. Uh, major Israeli companies uh, are active and are welcomed uh, in Azerbaijan, from uh, big dairy conglomerates to uh, uh, telecom, uh, uh, big companies, big business, uh, and again, very important. And uh, I would like just to add, you know, the energy cooperation. Uh, important than this. David mentioned our uh, Caspian, the daughter company of this state oil company, Sokar. Uh, <coughs> the Caspian drilling company is working in Israel. It's working in Israel, and um, uh, this is one significant area of cooperation. But of course, we have a wide and expansive cooperation in the agriculture sphere, uh, health sector. Um, Telecommunication is mentioned. One of the largest telecommunications companies of Azerbaijan was established by an Israeli company in the 1990s, and it's still there. It's the one of the largest companies there. Um, and of course, a defense area uh, is another very significant area of cooperation. Um, so these are very uh, important partnerships. And today, Azerbaijan, Israel is the takes the fourth place among uh, the countries we're doing trade with. Uh, so, it, uh, and also Azerbaijan is the largest trade partner for Israel in that entire uh, post-Soviet area. So I think this, uh, this is another element that was added to this natural alliance after we got independence and ma has made our partnership and relationship even stronger. And what do you see in the next five to ten years in terms of being that next step in terms of the economic trade relationship? You know, um, I think my... Uh, personal evaluation would be that this relationship we have has never been stronger. So it has reached a, <laughs> it has reached a level that uh, opens up so, much, uh, so many other opportunities uh, to cooperate, to work with, to the benefit of the peoples of both countries. So I think uh, education is going to be one of the major areas of cooperation. Cybersecurity is extremely important. It's becoming a, a, an issue, a big issue for, for us. Uh, we will uh, continue, of course, to expand our cooperation in the telecommunications area. One of the major priorities of my government is to uh, develop the telecommunications sector. Two years ago, we uh, built our uh, Actually, we sent to the space our first satellite, which was built by an American company, and we're about to send another one to the space, and, uh, and this will open not new opportunities as well. And also, agriculture is a is a huge area of cooperation, potentially of cooperation, where we can also enlarge our partnership, uh, because Azerbaijan and 
um, has a, a tremendous agricultural potential. Out of 12 climatic zones existing in the world, we've got a nine. So the small country of Azerbaijan. I was in Hawaii uh, last yeah. year, and they said we have 11. So we have just two to, to, to reach Hawaii. So that's why the country, the small country of Azerbaijan, the size of May, uh, is, uh, offers a lot of agricultural opportunities as well. You say you're a small country, but you're four times the size. <laughs> The size doesn't matter. <laughs> Only say that because we're the men. Speechless. Talk about economy and the wonderful partnerships, uh, but I think something that is uh, perhaps under the surface, um, you have Russia to the north and you have Iran to the south. Um, the idea of pluralism in your country and also, of course, in the, in the state of Israel, we talk about pluralism in uh, different ways. How are you able to keep that pluralism, Jews, Muslims, all the other uh, minorities within that country, without the pressure sort of seeping in from the, from the borders? Um. Azerbaijan, you correctly mentioned, is uh, located not in the most stable uh, region of the world. So, um, but as Israel, you know, we think this is one of the major similarities that we share with Israel. That is that we are islands of stability in turbulent regions. Um, it's, it's of course not easy. It's not easy, uh, I must say, I must note. Um, but, you know, we were having uh, excellent meetings uh, since yesterday with representatives of different Jewish communities here in Los Angeles. And that was one of the major questions that was being asked. And what's the major reason behind this tolerance, this um, uh, situation in Azerbaijan? Uh, I think, first of all, and the, my, my response to that question is always the same. First of all, there is a strong societal foundation for that. So, uh, for centuries, it has been the case in Azerbaijan that these ethnicities, these religions, have coexisted together. And this was due to the fact that Azerbaijan was a crossroads of different cultures and civilizations, that it has also helped develop this uh, environment. When people understood that if you concentrate on disagreements, uh, instead of the things that unite you, you will have, uh, you will have to fight all the time. So there are things that you can't agree on, and never, especially when it comes to religions. So that's why uh, we tried uh, to find common language uh, focusing on the elements that unite us instead of that divide us. And these are values, these are the humanity, which are the same in every religion. So that's why uh, it has helped us to develop this culture that was naturally developed, naturally formed. But of course, you can't here forget the role of the government. So the government, of course, can foster tolerance or government can uh, steer away and uh, do the, some uh, not so uh, positive stuff. So in our case, since the very beginning, the government of Azerbaijan has strengthened this tolerance, strengthened uh, this uh, interface harmony in Azerbaijan through different means. And um, that, then at the end, we've got this situation. That's why the society, the basis, strong base in the society, uh, and of course, the role of the government. Uh, actually, um, the notion of tolerance, the word tolerance, is not well seen in Azerbaijan. And that might surprise because what does tolerance mean in a narrow sense? It means, you know, you're different, I don't like you but I have to tolerate you, because, you know, there are laws. But in Azerbaijan, it's beyond tolerance. It's a mutual acceptance, mutual celebration of each other. And again, it was, it's not just the result of the last 20, 23 years. It has always been the case. I'll give you just one example of how different peoples in Azerbaijan understood and, and loved each other all these centuries. In, during the World War II, 
um, when Azerbaijani Muslims and Jews were in concentration camps together as soldiers, Azerbaijani Muslims from the mountains Jewish community, they would teach some prayers. I mean, so Azerbaijani Muslims would teach some prayers to the Jews in concentration camps, some Muslim prayers, so that they could, they could escape the persecution. And so that they could accept them as Muslims and to avoid the potential death. So, um, this is just one example, uh, but as I said in the response, there is a, a two-fold process which has worked in Azerbaijan and we are setting, trying to set an example for others to follow. Azerbaijan and other parts of the Middle East in terms of uh, these countries dealing with Israel? Uh, yes, and I, I think not only in the Middle East. Uh, Azerbaijan plays a very important role uh, globally. Uh, when you talk about the issues of anti-Semitism and tolerance in Europe right now, uh, there are forums where Azerbaijani representatives come in to speak to Europe about the Azerbaijani uh, uh, example of inclusion and cooperation between different communities. So uh, it is very important to the Middle East, to the Jewish world, uh, but also for Europe. Uh, there are many, many societies that are struggling with issues today uh, that Azerbaijan is, is already mastered. It's really, really uh, uh, uh, the role of government, as, as you mentioned. Uh, the heads of state in Azerbaijan make it a practice to visit the Jewish institutions during the year uh, to put out uh, uh, declarations during Jewish holidays and other religious holidays. There is a role for government to play that is a very, very positive uh, uh, role. And we deeply appreciate that. And we know we have many Azerbaijani Jews that have moved to Israel. So that we have that live bridge of cultures and we know what is happening uh, inside Azerbaijan. And the fact that the Jewish community is really uh, uh, living a life that is free and prosperous. It's, and it's an example of the, uh, my next question in terms of the relationship between the Azeri Jews in Israel and their brethren back in Azerbaijan. Obviously, we see Jews sometimes fleeing countries today in terms of anti Semitism in Europe. Um, and what does that look like in terms of the relationship with the Azeri Jews in Israel with their brethren um, back in Azerbaijan? So it's a, look, uh, one thing we didn't mention is that we have direct flights between Israel and Azerbaijan uh, just about every day. And anyone who wants to go to Baku is free to stop in Jerusalem for the weekend. It's a great flight. <laughs> From LA to Tel Aviv, you, you arrive right before Shabbat, you do Shabbat, you start the week in Baku and come back before, uh, before four days are over. Um, so it's a very close relationship. Uh, we have business people that go back and forth. Uh, the community is very much uh, uh, in touch. I'm seeing people in the room that are uh, reuniting tonight, family members that didn't even know that are coming together, speaking the same language, so it's, it's a very natural thing. We have to remember also that um, it's a very short flight. These are very short distances. Um, it's very natural for Israeli companies um, and communities, representatives of the communities, to just fly back and forth and to continue this, intensify this relationship. Uh, I see, you know, I think we all see uh, enormous potential. Uh, the, the trade has grown exponentially. The agreements that we're signing on dual taxation, on standardization, on a whole host of issues to, uh, you know, uh, bring together our economies is so intense. Uh, I don't, you know, I think we've, we've counted multiple agreements that were signed in 2014. Our leaders of our, our countries go back and forth all the time. Uh, so this is a, there's a platform for very, very significant uh, engagement in the future. Talked about economy, talked about religion. Something that's, of course, on the minds of not just Jews, but Americans and people around the world is Iran. What is the uh, government's view on Iran and negotiations and nuclear negotiations in the future there, obviously, as your country borders, borders Iran? Um, you know, <clears throat> Azerbaijan has a very long border with Iran, um, and uh, we, have, we, we have been neighbors with Iran for, for many, many decades, if not centuries. Um, 
And you know, as with any other country, Azerbaijan strives to have normal relationship. Um, and you know, so but you're doing your own job, uh, and of course you would like to expect that the other side also is doing the, the job. Um, uh, with Iran, we have of course a very diplomatic relationship. Our embassies are working in both countries, um, and. Um, at the same time, you know, um, there is a large Azerbaijani community living in Iran. Um, uh, probably 25 million of them. Uh, it's one third of Iran's population. And what I was uh, very moved today was to hear Azerbaijani language when I just walked in the in this uh, <laughs> temple. Uh, a, a nice lady uh, uh, from Iran, a Jewish lady from Iran, greeted us in Azerbaijani language. Because as I understand, they used to live in the part of Iran we, we populated by Azerbaijani community. So, um, yes, I'm saying it, hello. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, uh, this is another, another bond that unites us. And so, of course, we are, we are interested in stability, not only in Azerbaijan, but also in the surrounding area. It's very important for us because, you know, we are a small country. Um, if there is a lot of instability outside, it will, at the end of the day, also impact us tremendously. So we are very much interested in the peaceful resolution of all issues that are out, out there. And um, so uh, this is of tremendous importance to, to Azerbaijan. Uh, but from the very beginning, Azerbaijan has also made clear uh, to all our uh, partners, to all the, the neighbors, to all the countries in the world that, you know, we may be a small country, but um, we have uh, our right, we're entitled to have our own course of action, to have our own independent policy, which matches the best the interests of our people. So, uh, nobody can... Uh, uh, think that they, uh, Azerbaijan can accept any dictations from others to be about how to be friends with or about whom to be friends with. So Azerbaijan is choosing its own friends, but at the same time we are stretching our hands of friendship to all, uh, all the nations, all the nations in our region and outside. Israel's relationship with uh, Azerbaijan uh, stands on its own. Uh, it's a relationship that we will continue investing in. Um, uh, and, that is, and that is the, the Israel-Azerbaijan track. Uh, Israel's situation with Iran, uh, I don't need to tell this uh, audience, um, uh, we are very, very concerned about Iranian behavior, about the Iranian nuclear program, about the state of the negotiations that could enable Iran to be a threshold nuclear state we don't think that a, a country that is involved in what Iran is involved in, even without nuclear weapons, terrorism in five continents, 25 countries, uh, uh, uh, proxies on Israel's borders, sowing this kind of uh, instability that you were speaking about. Uh, we share an interest in a stable Middle East. We share an interest in peaceful relations between countries in the Middle East. We hope we'll get there through diplomacy. We hope we'll get there through uh, economic diplomatic tools so that Iran understands that what Iran does is unacceptable. They can't call for the destruction of Israel. They can't deny the Holocaust. They can't do what they do. And we hope that the world's diplomats will get the job done and convey the message to Iran that Iran can't continue doing what it's doing. That is our discussion with the P5 plus one. Uh, and that discussion will continue. And Israel, like Azerbaijan, like any other state, has a right to defend itself and to stand up for its interests. And uh, Iran, obviously, is a potentially existential threat to Israel, and we'll do what we can to make sure that Iran doesn't become a nuclear weapons country. So let me just add that, um, again, Instability is a, you know, you, you may have like a nice economic development, etc., but without stability, nothing would be possible. 
And um, from the Israeli experience also shows that, you know, uh, stability is tremendous, important, and Israel has made sure that the country remains internally stable, and it has made Israel a very strong country. Uh, that's, the same is true to, to Azerbaijan, but of course the neighboring region when there is instability, as I said, it affects you. And Azerbaijan knows it from its own experience, um, uh, what uh, instability, what, uh, what uh, military, uh, uh, actually what war can mean. Uh, a part of Azerbaijan, uh, unfortunately, was uh, invaded by neighboring Armenia 23 uh, years ago, when we just got independent. Uh, Azerbaijan was a big country, a low, like empty budget, no army at all. That was unfortunately the situation was used to invade a huge part of Azerbaijan's territory, around 20% of our territory, and one million people were expelled. So Azerbaijani, the number of Azerbaijan refugees was one million. Today it's even more after more than 20 years. So it was a huge injustice, not only in terms of. A, vi a violation of flagrant violation of international law because the territory of Azerbaijan is internationally recognized as in the, within these borders, but also huge injustice to these people who were uh, su suddenly expelled from their homes. So it's a, it was a situation that, of course, it was very dramatic, and um, uh, and we are in that regard. Let me also mention that we are thankful to the state of Israel, to the position of the state of Israel, which has always expressed very clearly that Israel supports the territorial integrity of Azerbaijan, which is valuable to us. And a couple of days ago, the Israeli president did something uh, unimaginable. The president of Israel, Mr. Rivlin, speaking at the United Nations General Assembly about Holocaust uh, on this uh, Remembrance Day, he mentioned several um, massacres that took place in different parts of the world and he, among those massacres, he mentioned the Khojali massacre, which was committed against Azerbaijani civilians in 1992 uh, and resulted in the death of hundreds of Azerbaijani civilians, children, women, elderly, primarily. So it's a very valuable to us. We, the people of Azerbaijan, we appreciate it so much. And uh, actu actually, um, it has been widely reported also in Azerbaijani media. So your president has become a hero in, that, in, in Azerbaijani hero for this courageous step. You need to uh, call the spade a spade. So you need uh, to say the things by their own names. We are, we are fed up by double standards, by all those way formulated. First, of course, to hear this wonderful Consul General speak about the partnership of Israel and Azerbaijan. We're also about to dedicate a Torah scroll, and therefore we have three flags here of America as well. And I believe this is not just uh, being filmed for our own uh, records, but also I believe being broadcast in uh, Azerbaijan as well. So for closing comments, for those who are watching, a Torah scroll from American Jews being dedicated to mountain Jews in Azerbaijan. I would say, what is your next What is the message that you have to present? Today is a historic day, a historic occasion, a milestone event is taking place. Today a bridge is being built, a bridge that will last forever between the Jewish community of the United States and the Jewish community of Azerbaijan. A bridge from people to people, a bridge from hearts to hearts. So that I uh, thank again to all those who made it possible. And we're so happy and honored to be part of this historic day, historic occasion. Thank you. I, I just want to say again, uh, if you want to get something done, think about consulting the Sinai community. So we, we came up with this idea uh, a, a while ago, and it wasn't easy, and we found partners uh, with you. And this is an incredible partnership. On Sunday, I had the privilege
together with the rabbi, together with your community leaders. You had just arrived that morning on an, uh, on an El Al flight with the Torah scroll, almost completed. We completed the Torah scroll here. Those of you who know how complex that process is, one mistake, one mistake in that a year of work is gone. It was completed here. The last word in the Torah is the word Israel. We signed it together. This whole community basically held hands. And it, it was one of the most moving moments uh, of my, my career, my time here in Los Angeles. So I want to thank again our, our, our friends, partners, allies from Azerbaijan for coming up with this amazing idea of dedicating a Torah scroll from this community Community, the Jewish community of Azerbaijan. Well, thank you for that, that very elucidating discussion about Azerbaijan and Israel and the relationship. Let me ask the delegation from Azerbaijan to come up to um, the stage here. If you would please come up. And Ellie, uh, you should come up too, please. As they're coming up, so how, how did this come about? Well, it came about when the Council General mentioned to Rabbi Wolpe that the Azerbaijan mountainous uh, Jewish community needed a Torah. Uh, Rabbi Wolpe mentioned it on a Shabbat morning in a sermon. Um, I later had lunch with the Council General. He mentioned it to me. I mentioned it to Ellie. Ellie went back to Rabbi Wolpe, and Rabbi Wolpe said, let's get this done. And when Rabbi Wolpe says, get it done, it's going to get done. It's, it's wonderful. I want to just point out the fact that the Council General, um, Mr. Agayev, obviously, he's not Jewish. He's a Muslim, and he's a proud Muslim. But he's made it his mission to get a safer Torah for the Azerbaijani community in Baku. turbulent, it's troubled, when hatred and violence are the order of the day, when violent extremists are trying to kidnap and pervert Islam, Mr. Agayev reminds us that there is a different way, a better way, it can happen, it can be done. Thank you so much. He mentioned that he wants to build bridges, and there's all kinds of bridges, there's pontoons, Beam bridges, trestle bridges, suspension bridges, some are permanent, some are temporary. And may our bridge be a strong one. May it be a permanent bridge. And it's a bridge that crosses many waters. Waters between Muslims and Jews, between the Azerbaijan Jewish community and the American Jewish community, between Azerbaijan and Israel, and between Azerbaijan and the United States. It's a many watered bridge. Thank you so much. I have to say that over 30, 30 to 35 people uh, affiliated with Sinai stepped forward to make this day possible. Um, each one stepped forward and said, here I am, he named me. Rabbi Wolpe led the effort, and we are eternally grateful to him. I'm going to mention a few of the people who made this um, day um, uh, possible by their significant contributions. Uh, in addition to Rabbi Wolpe, my own wife, Hallie Lerman, who said, he dating. And Siona and Ellie Elishmerny. Manaz and Cam, Cam Heckmat. Are you here, Cam? Right over there. 
and um, Daphna and Peshman Salimpur. <laughs> Monica and Mark Halusim, and I know you both are here. And Mr. Bert Cohen, and I know uh, Mr. Cohen is here as well. Thank you. I also want to thank Rabbi and Sofer Avishai Smila. It took him one year to write this Torah. Thank you. So I would like to ask everybody who made this Torah possible to stand so we could all recognize your generosity. Please, everyone stand. I want to say that our community at Sinai Temple gives this Sefer Torah to your community. We do it to affirm the unity of Kol Yisrael. We're all part of a common uh, history. We have a shared destiny. We have the same Jewish values. We're one community in the broadest and most important sense. Second, we want to proclaim that no matter where Jews may live, our Torah is our tree of life. It gives us strength, it's a light, a beacon of inspiration and comfort. Truly, it's our staff and the source of our strength and our ability to overcome adversity and to ensure that we pass on our traditions to the next generation. Finally, we give this to the Azerbaijan mountainous uh, Jewish community as an act of faith that one day all mankind will come to embrace the most profound commandment ever given to the gift of all of God's children. It's in our Torah, it's in that beautiful Torah. You must not oppress the stranger for once you were strangers in the land of Egypt. May we never lose hope that this imperative will one day be inscribed in the hearts of all people in all lands. And now Rabbi Wilpi is going to make the uh, presentation. The first thing I want to say is, in case you're wondering what the combination of the Jewish people and the Azerbaijani people can do, you should know for many years I used to play tournament chess, and I know that the greatest chess player in the world was Garry Kasparov, <laughs> whose original name was Weinstein because his father was Jewish and his mother was Azerbaijani and he was born in Baku. So you see, when you combine the two, we get an extraordinary individual, and when you combine it this evening, we get an extraordinary <laughs> event. Now, the Torah, according to our sages, is the ketubah. It's the marriage contract between God and Israel. And Sinai was a chupah. It was a marriage canopy. So when you give a Torah to another community, it's also like giving a ketubah. It's like giving a marriage contract, and it binds the two communities together. Because where it is read and where it is from are tied together in time, in space, in Jewish tradition, and in God's eyes. This Torah will have a cover very much like that one, but <laughs> it got caught at customs. So. <laughs> So, despite the fact that it has been designed and created and has a beautiful inscription, which was written by our own Eli al um, and just uh, and glossed for perfection by our own Consul General, um, we don't have it ready yet, but we wanted to have this up here so that you could see the way that this Sefer Torah will in fact be housed. Um, and we have the inscription. Where is the inscription that we can read to you so that you will know what the Torah will say? And it will say something very wonderful. <laughs> there it is. This Sefer Torah is a gift to the synagogue of mountain Jews in Baku as testimony to the unity of Klal Yisrael. This will say in Hebrew and in English with prayers for peace and welfare for the religious community of mountain Jews in Azerbaijan and all of Israel. And this Sefer Torah was written by members of Sinai Temple's Men's Club, Los Angeles, California, in honor of the whole Sinai Temple community, whose hearts and prayers are for the safety of the Jewish people and Eretz Israel. So, as 
as I present the Sefer Torah to the rabbi, I'm going to ask you please to rise and join me in the Shehechiyam. Thank you very much. He said that I wrote it with my whole heart for Azerbaijani Jewish community. I said, this is a God's word. So this is sacred to all of us. We have the one God, no matter what religion we have. So thank you very much. I would like to uh, introduce our delegation. Um, Mr. Uh, Yevda Abramov is the Jewish member of our parliament representing the area in Azerbaijan where the Jewish Jews live. Okay. Yes, Burun, give the matter. Hörmetli hanımlar ve cenablar, sizi bu güzel Sinay Sinagogu'nda Bu güzel optimist sifatla, bu hoş yüzle, bu güler yüzle görmekten ben çok memnunum ve bu geceki meclise göre Azerbaycan numayende heyetinin, Yahudi numayendelerinin sizinle bu görüşünden memnunum ve bu görüşe bizi davet ettiği için hamza teşekkür ederim. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, it's such a great honor to be at Sinai Temple, to meet with you and to see so many wonderful people here, so many uh, smiling faces here, and it's a great honor and pleasure for us to be here. Thank you very much for inviting us. It's a great honor to be here. 
Artık ben 10 ile kadar Azerbaycan Parlamentinin deputatıyam. Dünyanın yarısını gezip e, kurtarmışam. E, Amerika'da dördüncü seferimdi. Ben Amerika'nın senatorunda, senatında, kongresinde çıkış etmişim. E, İsrail devletinin e, parlamentinde defalarla çıkış etmişim. İsrail'in prezidentiyle, baş nazirleriyle, ayrı nazirlerle görüşmüşüm. Ama inanın ki, inanın ki bu güzel görüş, böyle bir hoş görüş, bana ancak İsrail ve Amerika'da e, Yahudi e, tedbirlerinde ancak bana rast gelir. I have been the member of Azerbaijani parliament since 10 years and I have uh, traveled uh, half of the world and I have met, uh, I have been to the United States uh, four times, uh, I have met many people at the US Congress, Senate, I met uh, Israeli presidents, I met Israeli prime ministers, uh, foreign ministers, all the officials and had so many good meetings. But believe me, this is the most moving and touching meeting for me. Thank you. Örmətli İsrail Dövlətinin başkonsulu benim ölkəm haqqında, yəni benim tarixi vətənim İsraildi, ama yaşadığım ölkə doğma Azərbaycanındı. Onun haqqında dediyiniz xoş sözlərə görə seminətarlıq edirəm. Dear Council General of Israel, State of Israel, uh, as Jews, our motherland is Israel. Uh, and the, the country, the dear country we live, we've been living for centuries is Azerbaijan. And I'm grateful to you for all the nice words you said about my country, Azerbaijan. Thank you very much. <laughs> İsrail Azerbaycan dostluk parlamentler arası dostluk grubunun rehberiye ve on ile yakındır ki ben bu dostluk için mensupiyet taşıyorum. And since 10 years I have also been the chairman of the uh, parliamentary interparliamentary friendship group in our uh, uh, parliament responsible for Israeli Azerbaijan relations. Biz e, yatanda Emşe, Yorsalimi ya da saları, İsrail'i ya da saları, ama Duranda şükür edip Azerbaycan'ı salamlıyor. When we go to bed, we remember Israel, we remember Yerushalayim. But uh, when we also wake up, we are, we thank and we say, we greet Azerbaycan. <gülüyor> bütün dünyanın ülkelerinde, bütün gitelerde. İsrail oğulları yaşayırlar. Ama birbirimizden ayrı düşmesine bakmayarak mükaddes Yorşalayim şehri ve mükaddes Sefer Tora bizleri hamısını, hamımızı birleştirir. Sons of Israel live in different parts of the world. But despite this fact, uh, Jerusalem and the, the Sefer Tora unite us all. Ben e ben çok danışmak istemiyorum çünkü her iki başkonsul bütün meseleleri tam ahati ettiler. Ama birinci şey diyeceğim. Belki üreğinizde bize karşı bir sual var ki e, Azerbaycan'da Yahudiler nece yaşıyorlar? Ben bunun cevabını çok kısa demek istiyorum. Bunu burada ota, oturan analar bile, analar körpü uşağlarını nece besleyirlerse, nece koruyurlarsa Azerbaycan devleti Yahudileri o cür koruyor. Two consul general here covered lots of issues, and I have nothing to add. But if you have a, just a simple question to me, how the Jews of Azerbaijan live in that country, in our country, and I would have a very simple answer to you. It's like mother taking care of her children. So Azerbaijan takes care of us as well. Çoğsalım, o kadar üreğimde size karşı hoş sözler var. Ama biraz e, reglamente göre ben sizden alelik, helalik ayrılıram ama biz bir daha görüşeceğiz gelen görüşlere kadar. And I have so much to tell you but due to time constraints I just say you see you soon. Thank you. And I would like now to invite Mr. Bilik Yildayev 
chairman of our um, mountainous Jewish community of Azerbaijan. Actually, let me add, Mr. Yevdaev is in Los Angeles for the second time. He came last year in May, and of course, uh, very sh for a short trip to Los Angeles, and I, th I said to myself uh, that Milik Yevdaev, uh, it would be great for Milik Yevdaev also to meet my dear friend David Siegel, who is a dear friend, but also a neighbor. We are in the same building since the several years, and actually we were very happy when Israeli council moved in, we feel now much safer. <laughs> so, uh, I took Mr. Yedayev to, to see David Siegel, and uh, there actually, that's when it all started. There, Milik Yedayev said, we, have, we don't want anything, we just want Seder Torah from your community for our synagogue. And that's when uh, we uh, started talking about it, and I'm so happy that the idea became bigger and bigger, and now we are here. So I just wanted to add that. Uh, O yuhu ise bu ünleri Çin ol. Çin olup ki geçen illeri indi cenab konsul geydeledi. Bizim söhbetimiz olan da cenab konsuluna üçümüz ve bana müraciyet edilen de ki sizin neye ihtiyacınız var? Ben de dedim ki yakışı olardı ki Amerika, Azerbaycan, Yahudi icmalarının dostluğunun mez böyle bir süper torana mühkemlenmesini ben isterdim. Ve bugün de o arzumuz, Allah Teala o arzunu bize kısmet eledi. İkincisi de bu günleri ele bir tarihi gündür ki Allah Teala'nın Mez Yahudi halkına Tora'nın bakış olunması günüdür. Ve mez bugün de Amerika Yahudi icmalarının Kaliforniya, Los Angeles Yahudi icmalarının Azerbaycan Yahudi icmasına bugünleri sivil Tora'nın bakış olunması günüyle aynı bir vakta düşün. Dear friends, uh, ladies and gentlemen, today uh, a dream is coming true. When I, as the Council General mentioned, visited Los Angeles last year and met uh, our esteemed uh, Council General David Siegel, uh, he asked, what do you need? I said, we just need a separate Torah that would build a bridge between the Jewish community of of the United States and the Jewish community of Azerbaijan. And today that dream has come true. And also I would like to mention that this week uh, we are reading in Torah the giving of Torah by God to the people, of, to the Jewish people. So it's so wonderful that our events coincides with that week and namely in this week we get this separate Torah presented to our community. Bugün hem de iki kat bir bayramdır ki bayanlar ben kardeşim kızını burada tapmışam. Today is a kind of double uh, holiday or the important day for me because just a while ago I found my niece here. Yuba, Tuvayla. Ben bir de Cenab Konsul'a bizim kardeşimiz Nesim Melim'e bütün bu işte bütün bu işte hizmetleri olan zahmeti olan ve birinci nöbede bu işi yazıp başa çattıran Rabah kardeşimize 
Böyük minnettarlıkla onun zahmetine baş eğirem. I would like to thank all those who were involved in this, uh, in, in making this happen. Um, and, and first and foremost, of course, to, the, uh, to our dear rabbi who actually wrote this Sefer Torah and that, that did, did such a wonderful job. And I would like to bow my head in front of him. Thank you very much. Bizim Azerbaycan'da hayat tarzımızı görmek için her birinizi Azerbaycan'a davet edeceğim. So that you can see uh, how we live in Azerbaijan, please come to Azerbaijan. I invite you. Sağ olun. Allah Teala hamınızı şer kuvvetlerden yükselsin. Hem mişede Harda yaşamağınızdan aslı olmayala böyle güleniş, hoş sifet olun. Allah Teala'nın kanadı altında, Allah amanında. Sağ olun. Thank you very much. Um, may God bless you and may God give you peace and protect you always. Thank you very much. Now uh, I would like to give the floor to Mr. Gunduz Ismailov. He's the deputy chairman of the state committee uh, of Azerbaijan, which works with all the religious communities of the country. So their main goal and main job is to foster interfaith harmony and tolerance in the country. And Mr. Ismailov is playing an important role in this process. <laughs> Ben her birinize teşekkür ederim. Bugün Tora teklim olan dini icma için sinagog 2011 yılında Cenab Prezident İlham Aliyev'in tapşırığıyla inşa edilen de onun temel koyma merasiminde Azerbaycan hükümeti adından ben çıkış etmiştim. Bugün ise hemin icmaya bu Tora'nın hediye edilmesi merasiminde yine de ben çıkış edirəm. Buna göre özümü hem bir Azerbaycanlı kimi hem de Müslüman kimi çok hoşbaxt sayıram ve düşünürüm ki bu benim hayatımda en önemli günlerden biridir. Bu hoşbaxtliyi bana yaşattığınız için herkese derin teşekkür bildiririm. I must uh, say that when in 2011 the government of Azerbaijan by the decree of our president Ilham Aliyev built a synagogue uh, for the mountainous Jewish community of Azerbaijan in Baku, in our capital. I, will, I participated at, at that event and delivered remarks. And it's a, such a great honor and pleasure to be here at the presentation of Sefer Torah to the same community and to speak again. Believe me, this is one of the most important days in my life. And I would like to thank you, thank all of those who made it possible. Azerbaijan Yahudi kardeşliğinin, dostluğunun 2500 yıl yaşı var. Biz bu dostluğu, büyük kardeşliği babalarımızdan, atalarımızdan emanet almışız. Bizden sonraki nesiller için ise miras koyacağız. Siz bu dostluğa, bu kardeşliğe verdiğiniz töhfe ile tekçe Azerbaycan Yahudi icmasına değil, Həm də Azərbaycan Yahudi qardaşlığına öz tövbənizi vermişsiniz. Buna görə də sizə təşəkkür edirəm. Azərbaycani, the, the friendship and fraternity between the peoples of Azərbaycan and the Jewish people, the Azərbaycani people and Jewish people, is 2500 years old. So, um, this uh, Sefer Torah, by uh, presenting this Sefer Torah to the Azərbaycan Jewish community, you are also contributing and strengthening this brotherhood uh, for ages. Beni elə gəlir ki, Cənab Başkonsulunda dediyi kimi, Yahudi-Azərbaycan münasibətləri bütün dünya üçün ən gözəl nümunədir, ən gözəl modeldir. Bu modeli yaradanlara və bu modelin inkişaf etdirilməsində xidmətləri olanlara bir daha təşəkkür edirəm. Çox sağ olun. As it was mentioned, the Azerbaijan is setting an example, good example for a Jewish Azerbaijani relationship is a model for other countries to follow. 
I would like to thank for all those. To, I'd like to thank all those who uh, who made it possible. Who, thanks to whom we are all here. One other thing that I am told that the Azerbaijani and Jewish people uh, share is a love of food. And we're going to make a mozi and then everybody is invited next door into Ziegler for something to eat. Thank you. Uh, Rabbi, Rabbi? As a rabbi is coming down to um, lead us in hamotzi. Uh, I want to just mention March 3, we have a fantastic men's club program with Lori Levinson and Jeff uh, Kitchhaven. We're going to talk about great biblical negotiations. Yes, the Bible has everything, including a guide to how to be a great negotiator. But March 15th is our Burning Bush Award Dinner. We're going to honor Jan and Phil Zakowski and Lena and Frank Portazarian. It's going to be a fabulous, fabulous evening, and I'd like to invite our two esteemed council generals to that event as our guests. We will send you an invitation and I hope you'll be able to, to join us. Amen. So if everyone would go to Ziegler out that way and um, thank you.